Okay, so we're going to pick up from where we left off. So question 35, we were talking about how we would use fanboys or coordinating conjunctions to connect two different independent clauses of a sentence. So in this question, this is an independent clause because it has both a subject and a verb, and it can stand independently of the other one. And this is also an independent clause because he and became are your subject and your verb, respectively, and it can also stand by itself. So since you have but, which is an independent, which is a coordinating conjunction or a fanboy's conjunction, you would need a comma to connect these two independent clauses. So A is your correct answer. 36, no punctuation because this is not an independent clause. 37, no punctuation. If you just read it out loud, you can see that it flows off the tongue pretty nicely, so no punctuation is needed for this one. 38, however many times we need to review is fine with me, no punctuation needed. 39, I did not expect to win and did not fear losing. So don't fall into the trap of putting a comma haphazardly. You want to be able to analyze each part of the sentence. So did not fear losing is not an independent clause. So no comma needed here, or no punctuation needed. Question 40, this is an independent clause, as is this. And this is your fanboy conjunction. So comma needed here. OK, next section asks us to identify words that have similar meanings to the words given. So another word for this is synonyms. You want to find synonyms of the words that are provided. 41, punctual. If you're punctual, you're on time. So C is your correct answer. 42, nimble. If you're nimble, you're agile. Or you can navigate through things pretty skillfully, pretty swiftly. They're not clumsy or anything. 43, delinquent. Would most um, correctly refer to past due. And if you're ever unsure about this, you can think about, first of all, what part of speech is it? And second of all, um, second of all, the connotation. So delinquent would have a pretty negative con connotation. And if you've ever heard of the term like a juvenile delinquent, it'd be someone who like commits crimes at a really young age. So it doesn't necessarily correlate to penalty. It's more of an action or a state of being for a person. So D would be most correct for this one. 44 conjunctive. If you think of the fanboy stuff we just talked about, they join together two independent clauses of a sentence. So applying that knowledge slash logic here, you can reasonably infer that conjunctive means joining together, even if you didn't know what it meant. So again, you can pull different parts of your knowledge and synthesize them to answer some of these questions. 45, exuberant means high spirits and enthusiasm. 46, genre means a type of category a type or category. So if you think back to English class, the different genres of books that you've been exposed to. 47, if you fret about something, you're anxious or worried about that thing. So you're agitated. 48, pertinent means relevant. And another word or another phrase for that rather is relating to the matter at hand. So B. 49, persuasive means compelling. And another word for compelling is convincing. So C is your correct answer. 50, I'm sure we've all experienced this at one time or another. Um, procrastination is when you basically leave things to the last minute. So that most closely matches with defer or postpone. 51, if something's really ambiguous, it's not really clear what's correct or what's incorrect. Um, so it, there's a lot of uncertainty or opaqueness there. So C is a correct answer for 51. Stipend is basically a small payment of money that you receive for completing some sort of task. So if you've ever taken on an internship, for example, or like some sort of small research position, you might have been paid like a certain sum of money for your contributions to the work you did there. So B is your correct answer. 53, if you're a, pro if you're a prodigy, it means that you're really gifted in some special area. So D is your correct answer. 54, wayward means headstrong or stubborn. 55, zealous means that you're really enthusiastic or excited about something. So C is a correct answer. 56, if you emphasize something, it means you really um, underscore it or you really highlight it. You really bring it out. So 
B encapsulates all those different terms that I just mentioned. 57, insomnia, this is just one thing that you really have to know. Um, SOM, um, I think is, it's like a root for sleep. It's like a root chunk of a word for sleep, like somnambulism. You might have encountered this at some time or another. It means sleepwalking. So without sleep is correct. Question number 58. Imperative. If something's imperative, it means that it, you have to do it. So imperative most closely aligns with obligatory, which basically is the same thing that I just said. 59, which word is spelled incorrectly? Remnant should have the, um, oh, well, that's correct, but this should be an N, sorry. So the M should be an N. So A is the correct answer for 59. Question 60. There should be a U between the O and the S in miraculous. C is your correct answer. 61, there is no D in between the E and the G, so A is the correct answer. 62, the A and the U should be switched around, so UA instead of AU, so D is your correct answer. 63, mathematics should have an E between the H and the M, so B is your correct answer. 64, there's only one E in simile, so D is your correct answer. 65, E in proceed should actually be replaced with an O, proceed, so B is your correct answer here. 66, tremendous should not have an I, rather it should have an E. A is your correct answer here. 67, if you think back to that elementary school rule, I before E, except after C. 67. You have a C here, so it should be I, E, E, I, sorry, not I, E. So conceive is spelled incorrectly in this question. 68, there should not be a double R here, it's just one R for de deferent, so B. Which is spelled incorrectly. This follows the I before E except after C rule, as does choice number C. Recipe is spelled correctly. Retreat is therefore spelled incorrectly because there should be an A instead of an E here. Question 70. Now we kind of move on to the nitty gritty of communication. So not just like the grammar or punctuation concepts, but more of like how you communicate. What type of software would a writer use to produce a slideshow for a meeting? So if you use a slideshow, you're most likely presenting something to a large group of people. So the presentational application aligns with that. Spell checks cannot distinguish what. So Spell checks allow you to identify words that are misspelled, but they cannot determine whether you use the word correctly or incorrectly. So A is the correct answer. The parts of a memo are the heading and the body. A block style business letter consists of all the following except all lines begin at the left hand margin. That's correct. There is a two inch top margin on the first page. That's correct. The typist initials are in lowercase. That's correct as well. Open punctuation is not used because you use closed punctuation. So think about like your colons, your um, commas, stuff like that. So that's what you use in a block style business letter. So C is correct. All memo headings contain what four parts? They must contain to, from, date, and subject. A modified block style letter is different from a box style letter because the typist initials are a double space and left hand aligned below the writer's name and title. So that's just something you have to know. Emails are useful and appropriate in communicating to provide concise information. So if you want to relay something really quickly or in a way that saves time and energy, you would use an email. Errors in correspondence can present an unfavorable image of you, your employer, and your organization. Um, if you just read the other answer choices, none of them make sense. When sending a memo to several people, a common way to arrange the names so as to not miss anyone is in alphabetical order. The other answers, again, don't make sense. Referral letters should be sent when 
a payment isn't closed, no. You don't want to be bothered with it, that does not make sense. You wish to rec recommend someone for a job, um, that would be correct. You're referring someone to a job, and an inquiry can be answered better by someone else, that's incorrect as well. So, D is your correct answer here. When you want to ask, keyword ask, for more information, you, would, you should send what type of letter. So if you just think about the wording, inquiry is really similar to ask. It's a synonym, so D would be a correct answer, even if you didn't know what a letter of inquiry contains. When you have lots of inquiries to reply to, it's most common practice to use a form letter. A form letter is basically a template letter that you can send um, at any time. It's like an automated response. So, in terms of email, actually, but for a form letter, it's the same concept, it's just like in print. So, C is your correct answer. Which of the following is not a common element of emails? Um, so, if you think of emails, you have the sender, that would be correct. You have your dateline at the top. Brief paragraphs are correct too because you would write concisely, but you don't have a complimentary closing. So like that signature portion on like a formalized block letter, you don't have. So complimentary closing is incorrect. When answering an inquiry, you should answer all questions completely, starting with your most positive answers. So that's just common business courtesy, so C is the correct answer. When answering several questions in a letter, you can make them more obvious by numbering the questions. When submitting a resume, it is also a good idea to include a cover letter. And a cover letter is basically just like um, a way to introduce the job, uh, the job recruiter to your resume. So it's like a nice introduction there. Okay, so now we're gonna talk punctuation once again. Question 86, Tom places Tom places and photographs all our trims for brochures, but he is not in the office this week. I will tell him you call. So the second sentence is correct. The first sentence is incorrect because you have the independent clause here and an independent clause here, so there should be a comma. So only the second sentence is correct. Question 87, Will said, you are never going to graduate if you don't apply yourself. Jordy replied, I know, but I just can't concentrate. So um, in this case, I don't think you would need an uppercase, actually. Well, you might, but there should be a comma here after the closing uh, quotations. And when Jordy's speaking, you would need quotations around what she's saying. So neither of these is punctuated correctly. 88. On February 2nd, 2013, the president will be making his inauguration speech. Where will you be at the time? So you actually need a comma after the year when you're using a month, day, year format. The second sentence is correct, so um, B is a correct answer for this question. Elena is in need of a trustworthy, reliable, organized assistant to help manage her branch office. Rachel Lindsay has applied, and she is a very trust, interesting and lively person. So this should be a period, and there should be a comma here. The first sentence is good, so the answer would be A. Only sentence one is correct. You may charge the entire cost to your account if you so choose. However, only if your charge is below 1,000 can you qualify for an increase in your limit. So in this case, both sentences are punctuated correctly. All the commas and whatnot are situated in the proper positions. Brayden, a hero in his own mind, decided to change a tire for a woman on the side of the road. When he stopped to help someone, ran out of the woods and tried to swing a wooden baseball bat at his head. Luckily, he saw them coming out of the corner of his eye. Okay, that is missing a lot of commas. So um, your second sentence is incorrect. It's missing a bunch of commas. It's a run on. And your first sentence, a hero, is what's called in a positive phrase. It kind of modifies um, a noun. So neither of these is correct. A positive need, a positives need commas. 
I will be happy to help students after school if necessary. I need